a bizarre tectonic plate bend causing terrible earthquakes. This is an example from what happened to Mexico about a year ago. A study, Diego Melgar and uh, Xioli Perez Campos from the conversation. The study shows the magnitude 7.1 earthquake that struck Mexico City and toppled 40 buildings. The memory remains fresh. Condemned structures dot many neighborhoods and their facades crumbling and after an earthquake 225 miles away in Oaxaca State shook the capital city again. February 16, 2018, the city mayor said hospitals treated dozens of people for panic attacks. Seismologists as well are still studying the September 19 earthquake of that time trying to better understand what's happening underneath Mexico City and in the paper Geophysical Research Letters brings critical findings to light since the damage in quake we have been analyzing data from the National Network of Seismological Sensors as well as a high quality GPS station around the country GPS stations Together, these instruments measure shaking across Mexico. We wanted to know what caused this magnitude 7.1 earthquake and whether a future shock could strike even closer to the city of 20 million people. And here's what we learned. The Earth's trembling surface. People in central Mexico are accustomed to the ground shaking. Since 1980, 40 perceptible earthquakes have hit this region. The September 19 quake actually occurred on the 32nd anniversary of the magnitude 8.1 earthquake that killed at least 10,000 people in, in and around Mexico City in 1985. That catastrophe marked an entire generation of Mexicans, including ourselves back when we were just kids. Now, as working seismologists, we have discovered that the 2017 earthquake, called Puebla Morelos, was fundamentally unlike its 1985 predecessor. In fact, it was different than most big Mexican earthquakes, which typically happen along the country's Pacific coast, where two tectonic plates collide. The Puebla Morelos quake occurred well inland, just 70 miles south of Mexico City, in Puebla State. Since the 1920s, only five other large earthquakes have originated in central Mexico. How earthquakes happen? Most major earthquakes worldwide happen along the unstable intersections in the Earth's crust, where two tectonic plates, that is the underground slabs that make up the planet's rocky shell, collide one plate sliding beneath the other. These are called subduction zones, and continued plate movements in those areas are responsible for the world's largest earthquakes the kinds that occasionally rattle Alaska, Japan, Chile, Indonesia. The West Coast has been, of course, in, a, in an earthquake hi hiatus. Now, the most, uh, most subduction zones, after one tectonic plate slides under, underneath the neighboring plate, beneath the neighboring plate, then continues on a diagonal downward dive and sinks deep into the Earth's mantle. But not in Mexico. There, the initial contact between the two tectonic plates, which collide off the country's southern Pacific coast, star starts off normally enough, with the subduction plate sinking diagonally downwards. But then, just as it begins to jet underneath the Mexican mainland, the plate, which is made of dense, heavy rocks, reverses course. It bends upward, sliding itself horizontally, beneath the plate Mexico sits on top of. This setup continues for about 125 miles or so. And then underneath Puebla State, just south of Mexico City, at a depth of 30 miles below ground, the subduction plate abruptly changes direction once more. It dives almost vertically downward, plunging itself deep into the Earth's mantle. What is a bending quake? When the plate bends downward, some of the rocks in the plate break. Think of a sturdy piece of wood. 
Flex lightly, it bends, but when the flexing becomes too strong, it will splinter violently. That is what's causing bending earthquakes like Mexico City. After the bent tectonic plate snaps, seismic waves emanate toward outwards from the breaking point, causing the earth to tremble. The closer you are to the epicenter, the stronger the shaking. This kind of rare Mexican quake typically has a relatively lower magnitude than the more common Pacific Coast variety, but that does not mean the shaking above ground feels weak. Because bending quakes strike Mexico's densely populated central region, beneath the feet of many millions, the shaking can be very strong indeed. And when they hit near Mexico City, as in September 2017, demonstrated the consequences can be devastating. Defining the hazard zones, this same unstable subducted plate runs underneath all central Mexico, and thanks to previous studies, we know that it is bent across a large continuous swath of central and southern Mexico. It is here from Michoacan State, part way up the Pacific coast, all the way down to southernmost Oaxaca, that bending earthquakes could occur. But the tectonic plates bend we learned, is only half of the story behind central Mexico shaking. The plate's texture also matters as well. High-resolution images of the ocean bottom of off Mexico's Pacific shore reveal that the seafloor terrain is rugged in a very organized fashion. There, beneath thousands of feet of water, we see high, narrow ridges and deep valleys that run lengthwise in a northwest-southeast direction. This fabric was created about 8 million years ago when the rocks first formed, way before tectonic plates collided to give Mexico a subduction zone. Even so, the plate's texture, marked by this linear fabric of underground mountains and canyons, turns out to be relevant in determining where these rare bending earthquakes might occur. Our research found that because of its ridges and valleys are oriented uniformly, Think of the grain on a sturdy piece of wood. A tectonic plate is far less likely to snap if the force that bends it is at an angle perpendicular to the direction of the fabric runs. Like a sheet of plywood, a tectonic plate is more resistant to pressure when bent against the grain. In other words, large, damaging, bending earthquakes are most likely to occur when the subduction plate own texture lines with the direction of its downward bend. This is good news for cities like Morelia in Michoacan, where we believe the plate's fabric runs almost perpendicular to the direction of the plate's break, the wrong setup for a strong earthquake. But it's bad news for neighboring Puebla and Oaxaca, where there the plate texture and plate bend are almost perfectly aligned, off by less than 10 degrees. Under such circumstances, the bent plate can more easily snap and break from continued tectonic movement. What's in store for Mexico then? Mexico City. The part of the plate bent near Mexico City where a September 19 quake occurred falls somewhere in between. The alignment between texture and plate is not perfect, but they're off angle by just 20 to 30 degrees. That means the capital could see another large quake. And based on our analysis, the epicenter could actually be closer to the city. This volatile tectonic band extends as far as north as the city of Cuernavaca, 30 miles from Mexico City's southern edge. These findings are a step forward in understanding Mexico's complex geology, but we still don't know how often bending earthquakes might happen, whether once a century or every decade. Seismologists worldwide are still far from being able to predict where, when, and how the next big one will strike. This is by Diego Melgar, Assistant Professor of Geophysics, University of Oregon, and Xiolo, Xioli Perez Campos, Professor, Universidad Nacional Antonoma de Mexico, UNAM. Article was originally published in The Conversation, and this is on Science Alert.
if you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.